on the track. to my youtube channel for those of you who don't know it's your boy big slang hope this is a new story time you know what i'm saying so if i get started though make sure you like comment subscribe share if you like my content that's how youtube do its thing you know what i'm saying keep circling my stuff and this story is about my first time getting locked up and i believe i was around 16 17 but the reason why the story is so important is because I've never been locked up before until I joined the gang, right? So it's like, you know, I was doing whatever I was, you know, I was doing whatever I was doing, you know. I grew up wild and, you know, did little robberies here and there, you know, committed other things, right? Other little petty crimes, right? But I never really got locked up for nothing. Like, you know, like I was good. And then it seemed like the moment I joined the gang, like, it just started to bring... Even though I wasn't really doing nothing in the beginning at first, it still started to bring like just negative vibe, negative energy towards my way. So I remember I couldn't smoke in the house. So I was in the staircase smoking. You know what I'm saying? Like most people used to smoke in the staircase anyway. So I was in the staircase in the building smoking with one of my men. So we smoking or whatever. And then like, I remember we finished smoking, so it was like a little clip left, you know. And the crazy thing is, like, we was like on the last, we was like on the last floor, like smoking by the roof, basically. So, you know, there's nowhere to go. So, like, we were sitting there, and then, like, as we sitting there, smack, like, the first thing I see, like, because we sitting down looking down the steps, and the first thing I see was like a gun, like I just see like a gun, like I see a gun like this, and it was turning like this way. You know what I'm saying? Like, because it's like when you go down, the staircase is, I mean, when you go down, you turn this way to go down to the next floor. So the person coming up has to turn this way and then face us. So, like, the first thing I seen was a big-ass gun. So I'm like, like, in my mind, I'm thinking, like, it's the rivals, you feel me? Like, I'm not really thinking, like, it's the police. I'm just thinking, like, oh, I'm just thinking about, like, where am I going to go? Like, I ain't got nowhere to go. I'm just sitting here. You know what I'm saying? Half smack, and then it's like it's just the roof behind me. So I just see a gun. So like you know, in these moments, you're thinking a whole bunch of stuff, right? But again, like I never thought it was the police. I thought it was the rivals. I'm like, damn, I'm 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 done up. Like I ain't nowhere to go. So then when I kind of like seen the uniform, I kind of like felt a little more relief. And around this time, you was using hearing about a lot of cop shootings and stuff like that. You know, um, this is like 2000. This was like 2008, 2000, yeah, like 2008. So, you know, you wasn't really hearing about it. Not saying that it wasn't happening. You just wasn't hearing about it like that. So, anyway, I see the I see the gun. And then I kind of like see the uniform. So, I kind of like felt a little relief because, you know, it wasn't the rivals. But then the, the cop that came and his partner, the cop was just like, man, jittery. Mind you, why you got your gun out, bro? Like, he had his gun out off the rip. So, like, when he, when he facing us now, he had the gun out and he's like... Yo, don't move. Mind you, we just, we just sitting there chilling, like, so, um, we had just finished the split, so, like, we kind of, like, threw it and crushed it, like, we, you know, fake crushed it, um, so he, like, yo, stop moving, feel me, so I'm, like, yo, bro, like, he, like, yo, put your hands up, so, we got our hands up or whatever, but we mad smack, so, like, our hands keep kind of, like, dropping, like, we, like, yo, bro, like, chill, bro, so, like, because we moving, he, like, mad jittery with the gun, like, he just, like, yo, stop moving, like, and I'm, like, yo, bro, like, Yo, like chill, bro. Like, so um, whatever. Luckily, he didn't shoot us. He came up, came up the stairs, whatever, whatever. And, like, fit pat us because we were sitting. Mind you, I was in my pajamas and slippers. That's how crazy this shit was. Like, I was in my pajamas and slippers, and I lived in the building. So like, I'm telling him, like, yo, bro, I live here in the building. Like, you know what I'm saying? You see, I'm in my pajamas, like, you know, and, and whatever. He wasn't trying to hear none of that. So I hit us was like a trespassing charge. Well, he hit me with a. My mans was there with me, and I lived there, so like it didn't make no sense. But like you know, the cops be out here violating, wilding. So they hit me with they hit me with trespassing, and they tried to hit us with some marijuana stuff that didn't really go nowhere. But 
it was just a whole crazy situation, right? But anyway, they took me to the precinct in my pajamas. Took me to the precinct in my pajamas. You know, I didn't go to the bookings. They let me go from the precinct, but then I had to walk all the way home. I had to walk all the way home from the precinct. And slippers. It wasn't, it wasn't, it was, it had to be like around September, October. Because I remember school had just kind of started. So it had to be like October. And you know, around October, it started getting a little chilly. So like, I ain't have a hoodie. I ain't have nothing. All I had was my pajamas and my slippers. And I'm walking all the way back home. So on my way home, I see one of the homeboys. You know what I'm saying? And he was just like, yo, what the fuck you doing out here with slippers and shit? So I was like, yo, bro, like, this came from a priest and bro, the police locked me up. So he like, police locked you up. He said, what you doing? Like, what happened? So I was like, yo, bro, I was just smoking in the building or whatever. And bro, they tried to hit me with like a little little clip or whatever, some like want to share and trespassing. So he was like, yo, that's crazy. But he told me like, he said, I ain't going to lie, bro. He said... You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's more that where that came from. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't start getting locked up till I turned crip myself. He was like, and you, you know, you just turned crip not too long ago. He was like, yo, you're going to be getting locked up a lot, bro. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I reminisce. Not reminisce, but, like, I reflect on these moments because it was, like, these moments that I remember as I was growing, right? Like, like you know, son sharing that information with me. Like, he didn't start getting locked up till he joined the gang, right? It just started bringing, like, negative energy, into my atmosphere, right? Even though I wasn't really doing nothing crazy in the beginning, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't running around with, with, with guns or doing anything stupid, right? But it was just like, just just starting to bring negative, like a negative aura, negative vibe my way. So, and the funny thing is, when I got to the precinct, like, I, you know, I was fucking with the cop. Like, I was like, yo, you're scary ass. Like, why? You, it was no need for you to have the gun out. Like, why you had the gun out, blah, blah, blah. So he was just like, oh, whatever. Like, we was going back and forth. And I was like, you're scary ass. And he was just like, yeah. Yeah, I would have shot y'all too. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he was just mad cocky with it. But I just think that was like a, a a big moment in my life also. Like, reflecting on it, how that played out. Like, because it was just like, you know, it was like little moments like that. Like, even when I went to the box, right? Like, I always recall little moments when my mother told me certain things. When my mother told me, like, and I mentioned this in another video. Like, I remember little conversations that I had with people when people try to tell me don't associate with certain people. Don't do this, don't do that, and I never listened. You know, I was young, I was I was dumb, I thought I knew everything. So I share those moments because it's like some of y'all might be going through similar things, right? Like y'all get around certain friends, or y'all get into certain organizations, or y'all or y'all get into certain movements, and then little things start giving you signals, little things start happening, little things start trying to warn you to turn back to not really fully go in this direction. But we ignore them. It's kind of like the butterflies in your stomach. You know, like the first time you go do a robbery, you know, you feel the butterflies. You're nervous. First time you go do any type of crazy crime, right? Like, you feel nervous. You know, you never did this before. You don't feel like yourself. You know, you you, you know, a lot of people, people going to sit here in front and say they naturals. That's not true. You know what I'm saying? Like, you feel some type of nervousness. You feel some type of adrenaline. You feel something because it's the first time you're doing this. And then after the first time... When you get to the second time, the third time, the fourth time, you start to feel it less and less and less. And I ignore those signs. I ignore those moments, those little moments in my life. But guess what? It came back later when I was in the box, when I was in big trouble, when I was in real trouble. I started to remember those little moments. So I share a lot of my, my, my life story, not because I'm trying to glorify nothing, not because I'm trying to be tough, not because it's cool. But because I know there's somebody out there who might be going through something similar or who might be ignoring the signs like I ignore them. And, you know, sometimes some of us are the sacrificial land, man. So, like, you don't got to go through some of the things that we went through. And I think, like, that's the biggest thing that I be trying to get at with my messages, right? Like, you know, I, I just narrate certain things that I went through so you could kind of, like, get a picture of, like, kind of like the environment that I was in. Kind of like the things that I was going through, what was happening around the time, and, like how far I have, I have come, right, like, I'm also gonna make videos about, like, you know, like, what it was like to fill out my first college application, what it was like my first day on campus, you know, because I want people to see the trajectory, and a lot of people feel like they can't change, they can't do nothing different, but, like, that's not true, man, I think a lot of times we can't see certain things because we're constantly hanging around people who are detrimental to our, to ourselves, 
and our, you know, and also to the environment around us, right? So I think that like the moment you start hanging out, like they say, right, rich people hang around rich people, you know, because you're always giving them ideas. They always giving each other ideas. Like broke people hang around broke people, right? Like, so it's like, it's the same thing. You know, the moment you change your friends, you know, you might change your environment. Maybe not where you live necessarily. Maybe you can't fully do that, but just start hanging out somewhere different. And I know it's easier said than done, but like, I just try to show y'all, man, that it could be done. Like, you can do it. I know it's hard to see it sometimes, but it can be done. You can make a difference and you can do something, something else with your life. But let me know what y'all think. Like, comment, subscribe, share. This is just a little something to get it going. You know what I'm saying? I ain't give y'all a little story time in a minute. But I got y'all though, man. Stay tuned. Or right, peace.